What's going on? I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and welcome to this episode of Learn Robotics with Liz, the show where I talk all things robotics and tech from the perspective of an engineer and share my thoughts on what I think you can do to learn more about tech and ultimately learn robotics. Stay tuned. We have an awesome episode for you here today. If you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to my channel or subscribing to the show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Ready? Let's get to it. Today's episode is all about how to get started in robotics. If you're not interested in getting started in robotics, this is not the episode for you, but I do encourage you to subscribe to the show so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. And if you are interested in getting started in robotics, this is a question that comes up a lot. I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of questions about how do I get into robotics? Whether that's for yourself, like, oh, I would like to get into robotics, or maybe it's for your kids or your family members. How do you even get into robotics in the first place? It's not necessarily the first pick that everybody has on their mind. And before I dive into the tactical tips on how to get started into robotics, I'm going to share with you my journey with robotics and how I ended up in the field just to give you some context. So it wasn't like I naturally set out on this path to become a robotics engineer. It just kind of happened that way. And I think with a lot of people's careers, you kind of design your career as you go. Growing up in school, I always did very well. I was always at the top of my class. I always had A's, A pluses, the 4.0, the extra credit. But I also worked very hard. At this. So it wasn't like I was just tapped on the head and I was like, okay, Liz, like you're going to show up to the exam. You just look at it. You get a hundred. That's never really how it was. I always had to put in the effort and all of the work to get the grades, but just like athletics where you have practices before the games, I would practice doing a ton of homework problems, doing a bunch of uh, review and reading and really just going through that process of learning learning how to learn, and I was very good at it. So once I figured out how to take tests and how to anticipate what would be on tests, I could prepare myself for the test and then know pretty much what would be asked on the test so that I could craft a really good answer um, for the test before taking it. So long story short, I did very well in school. I was always at the top of my class, so I was pushed into more difficult classes, so the AP classes, the advanced level classes, and I did well across the board. So it wasn't like I was super stellar in just one class. Like if I was in a class, I had to be the best at that class, and I had to be the best at every class that I was currently in. And that's just the personality that I have. So at the end of my high school career, I walked by a sign for a robotics club, and I just decided I would check it out. I didn't know what robots were. I had never seen a robot. I had never even thought about robots. This was, you know, before Learn Robotics. This was before, you know, Liz from Learn Robotics. This was just me walking by a sign as a person thinking, oh, I don't know what a robot is, but maybe I would like to go see a robot. So I went to that first weekend meeting and I didn't really have any expectations for this club, truthfully. I thought I was just going to go and maybe look at a robot. Maybe we would talk about robots or watch some video. But I actually got to sit at a computer with a small mobile robot. And this was prior to, you know, the modern robotics kits of today. This was, you know, very rudimentary robotics kits on a, you know, clunky old, you know, I don't know, four inch thick laptop, you know, way back before anything was fully integrated. This was before Scratch. This was before Arduino. This was before easy embedded systems. This was very early stage programming. And it was fun. You know, I got to sit there with the robot, with the software, and write some programs. We would set up some different mazes and challenges and playing fields, and we would just work on these robots. There was a, it was a small group of us. We each had a robot that we could work with and I was kind of good at it and it was a lot of fun. So I, I ended up 
continuing down the path of robotics and decided to continue pursuing robotics professionally. So I, I graduated high school and went to engineering school. And at the time, I mean, I, I think I have quite a lot of opinions about choosing engineering school or not, so I'll probably save that for a future episode. But I went to engineering school, got into the uh, robotics engineering program at WPI, went there, did my bachelor's degree there, and then from there went into corporate career, worked as an automation engineer for manufacturing, so working on industrial robotics. So that's how I ended up in robotics and robotics engineering. So now let's move into the second part of this episode on how you can get started into robotics. I have a few tips that I will share with you and you can use this to get ideas on how you want to plan your robotics journey moving forward. So just like my journey started, I went to a robotics club and had the experience of sitting and working on robotics with other people. You can join a robotics club. There are meetups, there are formal clubs, there are school clubs, there are organizations. There may even be a makerspace or robotics kind of group that's already meeting, whether you're a student or you're an adult. If you don't have a robotics club near you, Learn Robotics has a brand new program called Learn Robotics Clubs to help people who are interested in starting a robotics club have all the tools they need to do so in a way that makes it easy to organize content and projects and activities. So if you're interested in that, you can head on over to learnrobotics.org and search club and you'll see all of the different products and packages and things like that, the materials that you'll need to start a robotics club that has tangible activities. My biggest uh, recommendation is if you're looking for a robotics club, try to find one that's actually working on projects or working towards a goal. It doesn't have to be a competition team, but it's always better to go and work on skill development than to just go and talk about skill development. Those are two very different things. So try to find a group of people that are interested in building things, working on their mechanical skills, working on electronics and sensors and actually building robots. There are probably even some groups of just like engineers, current professionals that do this as well. So you can check out some of those local options near you. Facebook is a good place to look. Meetup is a good place to look. And then if none of those exist, you could start your own. The second idea is to pick up a robotics kit. Now, if you're not interested in making robotics a social aspect of your life, you could purchase any number of robotics kits. There are a ton of them online. All you need to do is search robotics kit and a bunch of them will pop up. You could get a mobile robot, you could get a hardware kit, you could get a sensor kit. The goal is to just pick something, pick a project or pick a kit and use the kit to build the gadget or the robot and have that hands-on experience with robotics. If you're interested in using the robotics kit that I designed, which I know I'm biased, I know I'm partial to my robotics kit, But I will say that if you are a beginner, it's going to be a much friendlier robotics kit to wire up, to connect, to work with. And even if you're more advanced, it's going to give you a very solid mobile robot platform that you can expand upon. You can swap out the controllers, you can add in new sensors, and everything will just work. You don't have to worry about uh, battery power, you don't have to worry about control and motors and stability all of that has been kind of engineered into the actual kit so that you can focus less on the rudimentary like which component works with which component and what tools do i need and more on i have this kit i have you know the foundation the structure of what i need to build this robot let me focus on learning the logic let me add in my own sensors let me add this module or this design And it's a really good starting point. So if you are interested in my robotics kit, check out the level two kit on learnrobotics.org. You can just search level two on Learn Robotics and it should pop right up. We use this kit in our level two course as well. 
So that brings me to point number three is to take a course. And I'm not going to sit here and just keep promoting my stuff. There are a ton of robotics courses out there. You don't have to learn from me. If you choose to learn from me, we provide you with the full roadmap A to Z on how to get started with robotics from zero background to actually building functional devices. So that's kind of the best way to get going in robotics really quickly is to learn from somebody else. Learn from somebody that has the experience in the area of robotics that you want to learn and then take their course. It will significantly expedite the amount of time it takes you to understand that particular topic. You could just search a bunch of stuff. You could read through a ton of articles. You could go through YouTube. You can set up your own DIY learning plan and just work on robotics. But from what I've found, the people that want to do it themselves take longer to actually acquire those types of skills. So the idea is that if you learn from somebody that's already ahead of you, you can significantly expedite your learning and you'll have a roadmap of guidelines on how to actually go from, I don't know what to learn to having, this is what you need to learn first, second, third, fourth, here are the lab activities that supplement that, here are the projects that supplement that. And then by the end of the course, you should have enough tools or enough knowledge to be able to apply those skills to whatever projects you want to make. Basically, the moral of this whole episode is you just get started. It doesn't really matter how you start robotics or which path you take to get into robotics. Really, the only thing you need to consider is what you're trying to get out of robotics, whether that's just a fun hobby or you're looking to change careers or you want to get into automation, or you want to get into research, you do need to be a little bit cognizant of where you want to end up in robotics. But once you decide what you want to do with robotics, you just need to decide to start and pick one of these ways to get involved with robotics. I encourage you to think about which of these options, whether it's a club or picking up a kit and doing a project or taking a course which one of these options will work the best for you. We have a wealth of resources on learnrobotics.org. I encourage you to go check them out and see what might be the best fit for you. There is another article that I've written about how to get started with robotics as a hobby. I will leave some links to these resources in the show notes. Feel free to check those out and reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help give my perspective on where I think Things are going from an industry standpoint and from a robotics and journey standpoint. So let me know how I can help you. And that concludes this episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. I hope you found it helpful and insightful and a great way to help you build your robotics journey. The first thing you need to do is start. If you liked this episode, do me a favor and share it with a friend. I'm trying to grow the podcast. And feel free to check out all of my resources on learnrobotics.org. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and I'll catch you next time.